We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to be continuing on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, yesterday, Peter kind of started us off uh, with this idea of our Father. Uh, and as we started looking, kind of what role does it have to have our Father? What does that impact? What does that mean for us? Uh, as we kind of continue that thought today, uh, we are going to be looking at the next phrase, our Father in heaven. Uh, so as we kind of looked along the comfort, the confidence, uh, that phrase our Father has, which is awesome, we're going to be looking now at in heaven. Uh, as we are praying to God, uh, who is our Father, our Abba, our Daddy, uh, which we observed, what does it mean that he is in heaven? Uh, most of us are familiar with the Cedar Valley. When we hear someone say they're from Cedar Falls, Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, Ames, Des Moines, we have an idea of the context. We know the schools in the area. We possibly even know some of the employers. Um, you know, even going beyond that immediate location, uh, if you hear a Californian, someone from Portland, a uh, New Yorker, we have an idea of what those locations mean. Uh, my wife is from Texas, and I used to think I knew what a Texan was. Um, you know, you have the cowboy bat, hat, you have the boots. Um, I went to the stockyards, I'm like, okay, yeah, I know what a Texan is. But as we kind of continue to learn more, I realized there's a place called Austin, uh, there's Houston, there's the carcinogenic coast, there's the Pine Curtain. The more we learn about a place, the more we begin to realize. So as Christ prays, our Father in heaven, a lot of us don't have that same familiarity that we might have with Cedar Falls, Waterloo, Des Moines. But Jesus, the one praying in this passage, he knows the context of heaven. Uh, he's been reigning from heaven along with the Father since forever. Uh, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it tells us that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. Uh, a few verses later, in John 1.14, it says that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, Jesus is the word. Jesus came from heaven to earth to be with us. Um, so Jesus, as he prays, our father in heaven, it's not some abstract idea. It's not some uh, odd location that he's just referencing. It's his home. It's where he originated from. Uh, it's, it's his point of familiarity. Uh, and when, you know, Jesus wasn't sitting in heaven one day and he's looking at his angels hanging out with us. And it's been an eternity. I think I, I think I'm ready for vacation. Uh, what what looks good? And you know, Gabriel didn't lean over and go, you know what, Jesus? There's an amazing manna stand. If you go to first century Jerusalem, you need to check that out. Like that, that's not how it happened, right? Uh, Jesus came to Earth on a rescue mission. It, it was a work trip, if you will. It wasn't a vacation. If you guys want, if you have a Bible in front of you, turn to Philippians two five through eleven. Uh, we just want to kind of want to look at a little bit of this this rescue mission here before we jump back into this focus on heaven. Uh, so again, if you have a Bible, turn to Philippians 2, 5 through 11. In other words, pop open a new tab and pull it up there. I'll give you a few seconds here as I scan over some of the crazy things that you've experienced here. Uh, kids riding bikes, people walking dogs, people playing in their yards. It's like going back to your childhood. That's accurate. Uh, going back to my childhood. Do and you can't people. And I put up Christmas lights. So those are some crazy things that I've done in the last uh, couple days here. Uh, so hopefully you've had a chance to get to Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Uh, let me read that here for us. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, being made in the likeness of men, being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. So the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, those who are in heaven and those on earth and under the earth. So that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I love this idea that so Jesus was from heaven. He came to earth 
He was obedient to the Father who he is now praying to, if you remember yesterday's video, um, even to the point of death on a cross, which is like the worst form of death imaginable at that point in time, um, so that every knee will bow on earth, those in heaven and those under the earth. Jesus left earth, or sorry, Jesus left heaven, coming to earth, knowing it would result in his death. Knowing the death was the cost needed to pay for our salvation so that we could be saved. When we look at that more, well, we may look at that more in the coming days as we continue into the prayer. But returning to this idea of heaven, the place Jesus came from, why is it crucial that we recall heaven when we pray? Uh, when Jesus prayed, why did he say, our Father in heaven? Uh, he wasn't concerned that a different father would intercept the prayer. Like Jesus didn't start, our Father, hallowed be thy name. And then you go, oh, wait, what if Joseph is sitting here doing some carpentry and goes, oh, yes, Jesus, what, what is it, my son? Uh, no, like Jesus knew when he prayed, that prayer was going to God, the creator, the maker of the universe. So then why did he add our Father in heaven? I think is to specify the addressee but not for the sake of the recipient. So he doesn't say our father in heaven so that the right father gets the message. He says our father in heaven so that orients how we pray. Uh, so that as we pray, I'm thinking, all right, so yes, I'm praying to my father, my Abba, my daddy, but he's also in heaven. He's God, he's the creator, he's the maker of the universe. He's the guy who in a breath said, let there be light and light was a thing. Uh, who said, you know what? life and life was a thing uh, so as we start our prayer with this jesus reminds us there's more to life than just the here and now as well while we are living in the moment we are living for eternity and what will that eternity look like will we spend that eternity with our father in heaven or we spend that eternity apart from our father in heaven who are you bringing with you in that eternity who are you leaving behind from that eternity Everyone has an eternal destiny. And as we start our prayer, meditating on our Father in heaven, we have that balance of eternal, and that will hopefully change how we pray. Uh, as we enter prayer thinking about that eternity, thinking about the weight, the gravity of the situation, uh, that will hopefully change how we pray. I mean, how often have you paused in your prayer? But I'm also praying to the creator of the universe. And I have eternity laid out before me, not just for myself, but for everyone around. Um, that should really impact how we approach and how we pray. I really love a quote from C.S. Lewis where he says, I pray because I cannot help myself. I pray because I am helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time. Waking and sleeping, it doesn't change God. It changes me. So think about that. We pray not to change God, but to change ourselves. Uh, God knows what we're going to pray before we pray, but that does not remove the necessity of our prayer. Uh, when we pray to our Father in heaven, our helplessness should be evident. Our needs should be obvious. Um, but we pray so that God can change us here on earth. Uh, that doesn't mean that we don't intercede for people. Uh, far away from that, we should definitely be interceding. But as we get asked for God to provide, as we ask for God to care, as we ask for God to love, to heal, we should be balancing the idea that we may be the answer that we are praying for. We may be the tool that God uses to answer our prayer. So as I pray that during this pandemic, my neighbors stay fed, perhaps I'm the person he's preparing to make them a meal. As I pray, God, keep the homeless warm as they can't gather closely and have to maintain six feet apart. Perhaps I'm the one that he's preparing to provide blankets to keep them warm. As I pray for the orphan to find a loving home, a caring family, perhaps I'm the one he's preparing to provide them that hope. So as we're praying our Father in heaven, we realize where we are in that hierarchy. We realize that we are the tool being used. We are the vessel carrying that God may change us, not to change God's mind. You know, God's not sitting up here and going, oh man, Brian, that is a genius thought. 
I'm glad you thought of that because I sure didn't. Like, no, like, that, that's ludicrous, right? It's crazy to think that we had a better idea than God. Uh, we're, we're coming to him with our, our intercessions, with our requests, with our pleas, with our gratitude, our awe, our response, our glory. But it's not to change God and so that God can change us. Um, I really where he says, I often ask Christians, what is the biggest thing you've asked God for this week? I remind them they're going to God, the Father, the maker of the universe, the one who holds the world in his hands. What did you ask God for? Did you ask for peanuts, for toys, for trinkets? Or did you ask for continents? I want to tell you it's tragic. The little itsy bitsy things we ask of our almighty God. Sure, nothing is too small, but also nothing is too big. Let's learn to ask from our big God some of those big things he talks about. God our Father is in heaven, waiting to hear from us, his beloved children. When you approach him today in prayer, you can approach him in confidence and in reverence. You can approach him in anticipation and in awe. You can approach him as your father, as your Abba, as your daddy, but you can also approach him as the almighty creator, the master of the universe, the one who holds time and eternity in his hands. So I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, what are some of those big things that you are going to ask God for? but nothing is too small. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna give you guys some, some time here. Throw, throw out in the comments, what are some of those big things that you want to ask God for? And bear in mind what we said yesterday, you know, God as our father, we have this boldness, this confidence that we can approach his throne uh, knowing that he's glad to have us. You know, you think about um, a good father and how he relates to us. Uh, you know, you can come to your dad, he's interested in the small minute details of your day. Um, you know, who did you play with? What did you watch? What did you do? What did you eat? But they, uh, they have good hopes for our future. God is that same way. Uh, God desires to know those minute details of our life, but he also wants to give us continents. He also wants to give us those great things. So again, feel free to throw out in the comments some of those big things that you're going to be asking of our big God. Recently, I've been spending a lot of time meditating on the I am statements of God and just this idea that, you know, I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am the bread of life. I am the door to the sheep. And as you kind of think about that, you know, bearing in mind that, you know, we're praying to God, the father, Christ, the mediator, as the, these I am roles um, and how will that. Your prayer, as you remember, you're praying to God in heaven, you're praying to the Almighty. Keep an eye out here for, see if anyone is sharing any of the, the big things they're asking from God. Um, praying that God would draw neighbors, um, our ones who need Jesus to him. Uh, I, I love the passage where Jesus says he looks in the crowds and he has compassion for them. He sees them distressed as sheep without a shepherd. He says, the harvest is plentiful, the labors are few. Pray for laborers to enter the harvest. And I love Tony in that comment, he mentioned the other his once. So he, he, he's that labor that's called for, but it's God who reaches in their heart, it's God who makes that change. That's also what we pray with you for that, Tony. Uh, safety for loved ones in healthcare, miracles for them, definitely. Um, we, we see God as the doctor, God as the healer. We have this idea that, you know, we need to be um, praying for that safety for, for the people in those high, high uh, dangerous situations, especially with the, the virus here going around. I learned some about what some hospitals are doing. It's insane. They definitely need our prayer. Um, but I'm going to transition here to some prayer. Feel free as I'm praying as well to keep throwing out big things you're praying for. Feel free to throw out just any other prayer requests that we have um, as I wrap us up here in a time of prayer. God, I'd just like to thank you for being our Father. And God, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity that we have to approach you in that bold confidence, that comfort, 
But then also, Lord, the knowledge that we have that you are in heaven. You are the maker, the creator of the universe. Uh, you have all power in your hands. You are in control of every moment, um, of every issue. Um, I think of how hard it is at times such as this. We see mass pandemic, which can lead to mass pain, and that you are in control. You are sovereign over all, God. Uh, we may not see a reason. We may not see the silver lining, Lord, but you do. And I just pray, God, that through tough times like this, we'll be able to lean heavily into you. We'll be able to look to you uh, as the, the master, as the creator, as the guider, as the provider. And Lord, I pray for these big things. I pray for our ones, for our neighbors, uh, for our friends, for our family that don't know you, um, that we can use this as a catalyst to share the hope that we have as they see us in the start time, just with a, an unreasonable joy founded in you, that they'll be able to design for medical professionals. I think of what I heard yesterday uh, from some people connected to the doctors at John Hopkins. They're not allowed to see their patients unless they have to be there uh, for the, the protection, the lack of equipment that we currently have. Lord, I just pray that you'll continually provide the means necessary to get tests done, to get health to people. I pray that you can heal the sick, Lord. I pray that you can uh, protect the healthy. I pray that you give us wisdom and diligence as we go about our days, as we go about our work, as we go about our lives. And I pray for the community in that, that we're um, just connecting sometimes when we're able to interact with another. I pray, God, that you can just help us uh, not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, as it says in Hebrews but all the more encourage one another on towards love and good deeds. I feel, God, this is a time that we need that more than ever. That we can encourage one another on towards love and good deeds. I just thank you, God, for the ability, the technology we have to do that, Lord. And God, I just pray, I, I love uh, what Kathleen just posted here, that the church will be revealed and that it will change our nation, God. This is a, a prime opportunity for the church to step up, for the church to just shine your light into the darkness, God. I just pray that you'll continually keep us close to you, keep us under your wing, and help us be the light in this dark time. For these things for your name's sake, amen. All right, thanks everyone. We're going to be back next, tomorrow. Uh, I was going to say next day, that's not a thing. We're going to be back tomorrow uh, looking at how in the future, as well as on YouTube. Uh, keep commenting, keep letting us know those big things that God is praying for. As you see answers for those prayers, please let us know. Uh, post a follow-up here, comment, let us know that big thing, that big answer that God gave. And just keep encouraging one another, keep encouraging us, keep encouraging your neighbors, and just help be in the light in this dark time. Uh, thank you much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.